Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So Vintage Blend Studios once a month has been giving us a prompt that celebrates and uh, explores vintage sewing techniques. And if you've been watching for a while, we've been working through numerous. Let me grab my little journal to show you. We have had um, all sorts of things from um, cross stitch and hexagons, English paper piecing, cut work that's not mine that's mine it's not even in shot um little uh, pieces of um uh, ribbon embroidery log cabin quilting and i did that freehand i was inspired by um mandy patuli who uses a lot of vintage very old quilts that have been hand stitched not on a sewing machine so to get that look let me come up a little bit on that camera for you. To get that look, I actually hand stitched those pieces together. Um, a bit of camphor quilt used in there, just some celebrating some old style uh, imagery. So it's just been such a uh, interesting journey. And the next month, which is uh, now, is Crazy Patchwork. Now, Crazy Patchwork for me has been a bit of an enigma. It was huge in the 80s into the 90s and everyone was doing it and I just found that it was so overwhelming. I'd look at imagery and think, oh my goodness, I can't do that. And the books would go back in the cupboard. I was lucky enough to do some classes with Jennifer here and these are her books. And it was interesting because we were chatting about it and I said, it's like the 80s and 90s, everything goes with it. And it was just, I don't know. No rhyme or reason to it. And now Slow Stitch has made us really stop and celebrate stitches, celebrate threads and textures. And you can see it in Jennifer's work where her patches, yes, they have the seam following technique, which is so the 80s and 90s, but then she'll come out and create this little vignette of uh, imagery that just breaks the rules of crazy patchworking. And I love it. I just think it's got more of an elegance about it now. So that's just my thoughts on it. These two books, this one is a full quilt, there's young Jennifer, um, that people can work through or create smaller projects using, like look at that. Isn't that overwhelming? Like, I don't know about this crazy patchwork. Gonna give it a go. Going to give it a go. In the class, a lot of the ladies were working on a quilt, so they all had hexagons in the colours of their choice and were um, working through different stitches and exploring what you can actually do uh, to embellish your panel, which is what we're going to do. So I decided I'm going to keep it fairly neutral and let the embroidery be the hero. But as honouring the request for our illustrious leader, young Susanna, she wants us to pick either a doily or a floral piece to be the centre of it. So I went hunting and in my box of tricks that we've had the whole time, I had these two pieces, but they just didn't do anything for me. This I felt was too big and overpowering. This I've already stitched in a previous page. So... I went looking and I found this fabric. I'm pretty sure I got it from Spotlight and it's like watercolour flowers. And they're so beautiful and loose and just, I don't know, I just, just love them. So I pinched out this little piece and this is going to be the, I guess, the foundation to the whole thing. And from this, I'll use these tones to do my embroidery. So that's the plan. So I've cut myself a square and now I want to actually hand stitch it too. Now, technically you would go to your sewing machine and you would, you know, do your lines, but in the, in the celebration of slow stitch and what it is these days, we're gonna hand stitch it. And that way too, if you don't have access to a sewing machine or you're on holidays and you just feel like doing a little project, a little bit of slow stitch. This is this is a good one because you've got to build your block. Now I've got my piece already that is the size of the page we need and I must be very 
very mindful that I stay within it. And I've just tilted my square um, just a little bit, just so it looks a little interesting. I hope I can keep him, but it may not happen. We'll, we'll just see how it goes. And I've got some neutral-ish pieces. So the plan is to see what we can we can do. So I'm going to, I don't want to waste my fabric too. So I probably will snip that off there. I won't let that disappear under the seam. It's, it's tricky when you're, you're dealing with vintage fabrics, you get a little bit precious, don't you? So I'm just going to place a couple pins. I think the secret to it as well is don't get too small with your sections because you end up um, am I going to be in I'm just got to think for a moment have I got enough happening yeah I like the distance yeah if you get too small you won't have enough room to explore the stitching side of things and that's what it's really all about so less is more probably in the world of crazy patchwork it's always been so daunting to me I don't know why I feel like I don't know maybe the world of slow stitch has slowed down a little bit and we're thinking more about the piece and not so follow the lines I don't know that's my theory anyway that's how I feel about it I've got another book somewhere too I must dig it out for the next video that is off the chart when it comes to stitching and dead set. I look through that and every time it goes back in the cupboard because it's too much. It's stunning, absolutely stunning. And it's all in those pinks and like the tones of this, it's just beautiful, but overwhelming, overwhelming. And I even said that to uh, Jennifer in the class that I've admired her work for a little while and looked at those books and I've gone, oh my goodness, I can't do that. And they've gone back in the cupboard. But I said when, when she bought out that third book, which is just focusing on the embroidery and how to layer your stitches and your different um, um, threads, to build up your embroidery it all made sense and she was like oh interesting and I said yeah and she she then even commented that it feels like she's hit us with the big project and she's slowly paring it back and now she's got the you know how to actually conquer it and I think I think she's right because it's I think slow stitch is allowing us to sort of pare it back a little bit and break some rules. Because I can imagine, unless we were back in the 1800s making a quilt with hand threading, you know, needle and thread, we're just all straight on into our genomes and whiz bang, there we go, another quilt, another quilt, where fabrics were so hard to come by and sewing machines, well, they didn't have access to that. So the needle and thread and quilts took time. And they were offering communities working on a quilt, which I just think is beautiful. Villages, the ladies would get together and have a stitching day. And before you knew it, the quilt was done for someone within their community. And oh, the love that was pouring into them. I love that. Okay. So if this takes a bit of time to do, I might need to stop and start the video. We'll see. That wasn't too quick. Would that take a little bit of gas bagging and 10 minutes to stitch that seam? Now you should press between each layer, but I'm not going to because I want that organic feel. I don't want it to feel too crisp. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break a lot of rules, I'm sure. 
Okay. And now, because I'm being stingy, I'm going to just snip that off and save that little piece. <laughs> oh, gee. And then I'll trim the side when we sort of get to that. So I need a fairly big piece now to whiz across there. We might use this one. Will it make it? It will if I go to there. Let's do that. And then we'll have a piece going up there. I like that. That's giving me a really good area to do something to. So I'm happy with that. So let's see if I can get as much as I can. I might sneak through there. And if I stitch a quarter of an inch in, I think, I think we'll be fine. I'll just pin the back this way. So it is a lot of fun and hopefully not too daunting for me. I don't think it will. I feel a lot more confident now that it's <laughs> taken the, the, the gas off the accelerator. What were we saying? Um, it's like the 80s. What happened? And I said, it's the hairspray. It's the hairspray got into our brains and the teasing of the hair that then sent, sent this crazy patchwork into a, a stratosphere of, uh, yeah, <laughs> what were we thinking? I might just pull it back. I don't want to. I'm going to just pull it back. I'm scared that I'll put my seam in and I'll see that white edge. So I'm just going to pinch back a little bit. And I'll do a small seam because I want as much of this gorgeous linen as I can. I'm just thinking, just want to make sure I don't lose imagery where I'd love to maintain the imagery. Like that little watercolour flower. I think I'll probably lose a little bit of him, but... We'll see. So now I'm just going to do my back stitch there to secure this piece. Looking forward to it, but I must say I was nervous at the beginning of the year when I saw it and I'm like, oh, oh here we go. It's like the, I don't know, there's always that one technique that you have off to the side and you admire it from a distance but you're just a little bit nervous to have a go. Another one for me is stump work and before I have a crack like just watching YouTube videos I really would like to do a class first with a, uh, a proper tuition so that I get my technique right because I have a feeling it is a bit that way. So um, I believe that Susanna has a business near her down there in Victoria that offers classes. So she's trying to get us in to a class. So looking forward to that, to getting my head around stump work. Now, Sus um, Sonia Steptoe on her channel, she often does stump work. She makes it look so easy. She really does. But still, it's like I'm watching from a, the over, I'm looking over the fence at a really cool activity, but I'm too chicken to, you know, jump in boots and all. And this particular technique of crazy patch was one of them. We've all got them. We've all got our little unicorns. We admire them, but dare not hop on the back of a unicorn. We'll stick to the Clyde styles. <laughs> It's not even a saying. I've just made that up. It's crazy. But I think you know what I mean. So if you're a lover of the old quilts as a foundation to slow stitch, but you just can't get your hands on, let alone a full one, like they go for thousands of dollars, but even the pieces where someone has 
cut one up and is selling them as pieces. Don't stress, just create your own. Grab your fabrics that you love and run them through the washing machine a few times. Put them in a little bag and throw them in with a few loads of washing and that'll just take the rigidness out of the fabric if you want it to look more um, aged that'd be my suggestion if you're happy with it being a nice crisp fabric you know brand new well don't bother I don't mind that because by the time I've handled it and embroidered and stitched and the fabric tends to come alive anyway some of the stiffest fabrics that I've had to work with have just become so beautiful by the end of the project. Linen's a classic. Like this is quite firm, but once you start working it, it just becomes so soft and beautiful. All right, so we're nearly there. So yeah, you can create your own old piece of quilt is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to end that off we have the next piece stitched in so if I can get the base made then in the, we might have time to draw some oh is that beautiful and I love the organic feel of that fabric oh happy happy why is there something prickly there? Must be something in the linen, a bit of husk or something. Oh, beautiful. So I need a piece now to scoot up that edge and hopefully I can just slip past that little flower. I need a fairly long piece, don't I? Maybe this guy will get me there. Just, just, maybe just. I could do I could do a shorter piece. Yeah, I think I need to. It needs to actually be that. Colour's not too bright. I think it is. Colour's too bright. I did grab out some of these fabrics. Maybe we put a bit of so I had thought of the music. What about yeah, what's in the scraps? Like I like it, but it's a bit overpowering, isn't it? Um, just checking my scraps. There's a blue. And technically I only need a piece to get to there and then that's the final strip. What about a little stripe? What do we think of that? Just to break it up a little bit. I like it. And then maybe I use text across the top. I don't know. Do I like the stripe? Just having one more little look. There's a little bit more of the fabric from the... Um, so I could put that across the top. That's a, um, what's he called? Tim Holtz fabric. Don't mind that. And I could really embroider over here and then keep this a little bit simpler. Or am I making it hard for myself? I do like that stripe. I'm going to do the stripe. Let's be brave. Let's be brave. It does blend quite well so I feel oh I don't even have enough fabric to get there maybe I've got to do it at an angle mm. <laughs> if I do an angle to get the length out of this fabric I am wasting a bit but it would get me there wouldn't it just oh, maybe Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Just got to get my angles right. 
Yes, they say scraps is all you need, but your scraps also need to get where you need to get. See, it's a bit... I don't think it will. Just... No, it's not going to make it. See, I don't want to lose that. Might not make it. I don't think it's going to make it. I'm trying to stretch it <laughs> and I can will that make it oh, gosh it's close see it do, either doesn't make it there or it doesn't make it there all right walk away from the, the strap the stripe what have we got here what's this piece this would work oh I like this and we've got plenty like for goodness sakes let's not be stingy we will make it Let's have a wash of the blue over here. I, I like this. Yeah. Happy girl. Happy girl. And she doesn't have to be stingy. Okay. Pins. Then we can choose something to come across the top there. Oops. I don't think I will do a quilt line because like sometimes they do a quilt line. I don't think I will. I might put a few invisible stitches around just to hold it down or even some tacking stitches that I then can take out. Now, before we go bullet a gate here, girl, where is that little flower? So we want to stay as tight as we can to the edge so that I can get every little millimeter of that petal oh, further up, further up. I'll put a pin there. That's where I know I'm near that flower. But I'll be I'll be really really miserly. I think technically you're supposed to trim as you go to told you we we're going to break all the rules. It's slow stitch 2023 crazy patch. So we're we're rule breakers now, aren't we? Sorry to the purists that have been doing this. Hats off to you. I often see pieces at the local shows that have been made. Holy smokes, aren't they just, just amazing. Very daunting. Okay. So if you're on a holiday and you don't have a sewing machine, go to your local thrift store. Pick up some interesting clothing with different textured type fabrics and make yourself some quilt panels and then embellish. It is just the best. Especially if you can find some beautiful fabrics. It's amazing what's out there. I'm always in a rush, but I'm sort of, I don't know, I'm a shocker shopping. I go when I need something. I don't go for the sake of it. And when it's clothes shopping, gosh, I stand at the door of the boutique or the shop or the, let's be honest, the Kmart and glance down the aisle. And if there's not a fabric colour that bounces out to me, I'm gone. I just don't, I just don't invest the time. Just not a clothes girl. I'm a fabric girl, don't get me wrong. I can go into a fabric shop and my eyes seem to slow down there, don't they? Funny that. Gotta stop buying fabric. Just a thought that popped in my did I say that out aloud? That was a thought that was in my head then. 
I shouldn't have said it out aloud because someone might hold me accountable. <laughs> Back away from the fabric. At least I've stopped buying scrapbook paper. Oh my goodness. Seriously. It's all so pretty. Then digitals hit the market. Oh my goodness. Click, click, drop, print. Digitals everywhere. Oh, I tell you. That's the bro that's the flower. This is a very coarse fabric so I can't be too tight on that little seam so I think I am going to lose a little bit of that flower because it might just disintegrate well it probably won't because I'll be stitching over it won't I but I feel like I need to I wonder if the final piece could be some lace Ooh, didn't think of that thinking I like that that'd be pretty can't see why we can't. I might need to grab my bucket of lace. I'm pretty sure, actually, I've got some wide laces to the side of me in a drawer. I might even lean in there. That's such a crooked seam. Look at that. Eat your heart out. That's rustic. <laughs> But that's the look. That's what we want. I could have drawn a line, you know, logically. Thinking back on the situation, I probably could have drawn a, a line with a ruler and stitched along it. I bet you were all saying, Corinne, you're going crooked, draw a line with a ruler. But no, she's a wild child today. She's going to be very naughty. I feel naughty. Don't know why. So we're right to the end. So now I'll just knot that off, go through to the back. Let's have a look at the laces. Don't have anything wide enough in the really old stuff. So we'll stay out of that department. That's directly behind me. We're gonna go to the side of me let's flip that out oh look that's pretty good that's not too bad bit of a swinging seam there but you know that's okay like I said I'll come through with my uh, rotary cutter and just square myself back up which will make it look completely different again when you look at where's the square see that on me that shape that shape See, it really takes a life of its own when you start playing with angles okay let's let's go down the lace avenue second choice was something script which i do like do we have a piece that would look good let's just get this big guy here We're just having a quick play. How are we going for time? We've got heaps of time. Let's get that there. Oh, I don't like that. And where's our perimeter? So we're only going to see just a snippet of it. I'm going to do that, guys. No, let's look at lace. Just, just let's have a quick look. All right. Let's see if we've got anything spectacular. So we need something wide. So we could do, get that out of there. We could do something like that. No. We could do something like that. But 
see I'm not paying homage to that lace really, am I? I'm just getting this little piece at the top. And then... No. If I she could do this just with laces, how pretty would that be? Just a crazy, the style of this, but with laces. And then you probably wouldn't even need to do any embroidery because you've, um, your lace is telling the story. No. I'm sure that's an idea that's out there and I've just caught up with the 80s. No, there's, there's nothing there jumping out at me. I'm going to do this script. I'm going to cut out... I just want to make sure I don't shortchange myself in fabric. So I'm going to go past us a little bit. Let's be generous. Like scraps like this, they, they disappear into my little box of fabrics and who knows where it'll pop up in the future. So I'm not too worried about chopping into that. All right, I think that fabric is a Tim Holtz fabric, but I'm not 100% sure if anyone recognises it. I'm just looking for the selvage. It might be just a, a motor that's called script or something, letters and script. I have a feeling it's Tim Holtz, but, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me. If anyone recognises it, please throw it into the comments because there's no selvage on that at all. But it is in my drawer with all the Tim Holtz fabrics. So it's possible that it's mixed up too. All right. So we didn't use the music. We've used enough of the, the old girls. Put them away. So I might just get rid of this a little bit. go back into the box of tricks it's good that this has appeared because it's through the whole piece okay let's last one like you could probably have more angles like if it was a triangle or a hexagon your piece would have more shape to it but it might get a bit busy so let's have a look let's fold that over and see, yeah, and it makes it. Okay, so I might give a little bit of air from where the text starts. So it's not so straight on. I like that. My angles right. I'm just doing a little bit of a finger press. This fabric's really soft. So all my sides are covered. Yes, yes, yes. Might even get a little bit of that motif there. Barely. Do I want to attempt to get it? No, I'm not too worried. I might even... Maybe I, sorry guys, I'm just thinking. This is my problem. I start envisioning, envisioning, visualizing, envisioning, the act of envisualizing. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, I start the, seeing ahead the, the image of it finished. So often that makes me go round and round in circles a little bit. So I'm thinking I, I just want that gone. You're either in or you're out. And I like the fact that I think that I'm getting a bit of a breath of air here before the text start. Because remember, we're going to embellish all that. So I think... I think that that is good. It's 
probably is creeping up on that little flower a little bit but I think I might even draw a bit of a line because I really want this position right I am overthinking it so let's pin so it's only taken us half an hour to get to this point so that's not too bad I can see it. It's all good. Don't need a line. It'll be too straight then and it'll look odd. We want it to be wonky. Okay. Last one. Like I said... You know, depending on how you start in the middle, what shape you start with is what I'm trying to say, um, will dictate how many pieces of fabric that you, you sort of need to get you where you're going. So mine's quite simple, could have been crazier, but this is, this is good. I guess I want to be all about the embellishing as well these stitches that's what draws me to it so I'm pleased Susanna suggested a focal point because I probably wouldn't have twigged to do that I probably would have just picked a piece of fabric and kept it very neutral so I'm glad she made a stop for a moment and go okay well let's use a doily or a you know an embroidered doily where you've got some gorgeous vintage piece of embroidery in there that kicks you off it's a, a really good idea Bear with me, I probably should be stopping the video. I'll go for another minute or two. That'll bring us up to 40 minutes. Then I will stop the video. I'll finish stitching this because I think you've seen the, pretty much the process of getting your panel ready. I will then trim it. I might even do some invisible stitch on it. Then I will um, come back with my friction pen and start sort of planning out where we might place some stitches. Not that we'll probably get much done in 20 minutes, but we'll see how we go. This is going to take a few episodes, I'd say. There's a lot of work in this. We probably could cheat with some braids and things like that. I haven't really thought too far yet. Maybe there's some braids there that might suit it and I could do a little bit of everything. Who knows? We'll get to that when we get to it. Haven't thought that far ahead. The main consideration was to give myself room to do something, to have some nice big panels to do stitching on. Maybe this word area is suitable for a braid or a, a trim because then I can sneak it away from the flower. Yeah, see, that might actually be sheer genius. I can sneak it away from my little flower tip there and make it look like the seam is further afoot. Does that make sense? That stitch is a bit big. I'm just gonna go back on myself there.
think I will pause the video, guys. We're nearly done, but we've done well. Even if we don't get too much stitching done in the next part, it might be just a chance for me to clear my head and get a plan of attack. So I need to thread again. Yeah, I'm going to stop at 40 minutes and I will be back and that will be trimmed and ready to go. So see you in a moment. Bye. Hi guys, I'm back. I still haven't got to where I said I would. I flipped my piece over. I finished stitching that. Pushed it all out, finger pressed, not using an iron because I want that more organic feel. You can see my base piece there. So what I've done is, that's why I thought I'd better turn the camera on because if you're new to this, um, this might just be something that helps you to the next stage. So I've pinned it out so I feel like everything is sort of sitting properly. And I'm going to do a cut, but I'm just going to give myself a quarter of an inch all the way around. Because as you embroider, it tends to pull fabric in a little bit. Um, so I thought oh, I'll just cut it a little, little bigger. Whoops, nearly threw the scissors on the floor. Um, my journal can handle a little bit of a space hanging outside the template. I can always trim it back. So I thought, oh, Pepper. My husband's just walked outside, so she's gone. Oh, hello, Dad. Okay, so now I feel like it's looking good. So you would do this if you were back in the old days, in the 80s. You would do this with one of those rotary cutters, you know, one of these, and just chum, chum. And it'd be so professional and neat. But we're not doing that. There we go. So now, because I don't want those pins annoying me, I'm actually going to do a tacking stitch right around the perimeter. Because then I know it's holding those fabrics in position for me. Because they're a little bit puffy. Because, you know, we haven't had an iron. So I'm just going to flip it over. And just do a little stitch. I'll probably end up pulling it out, but I might leave it too, because it does look cool sometimes. It's not quite an invisible stitch, because I sort of want it to make sure it really holds. Because embroidery, like I said, does tend to pull fabrics and these are very loose woven fabrics so I want to make sure that you know see I've got a little little bit on my needle there which is the other side but a good centimeter on this side so a good centimeter and a little bit I can get rid of that and I'm just going to whip around the outside and make sure held all right I'll do that and I'll be back won't be moment okay I'm back so everything's tacked down my piece is sitting reasonably flat remember I haven't ironed anything so it's gonna feel a little organic um, now I'm thinking this this seam here I'd like to use a trim so I grabbed out this little pile and what I'm thinking is if I can sneak the trim just to the edge instead of it covering the whole seam and knocking my flower bud back into the distance I could sit one of these little trims in there as um, the start of something and then up you go from there with some decorative stitches so I've got a few here we've got a thick pink one we've got a couple Rick racks or zigzags, zigzag braid, Rick racks. What do we used to call them? Rick rack. There's a little cream one. 
thing is, I just don't know. I think that's all. This this is no good. I'll be beading anyway, so we don't need to use that. We've got four here. I think there's a cream one of those somewhere too. I have a feeling I shouldn't make that decision until I know how my embroidery is going. But at least we've got some options. Thin, thick, you know, things like that. So with that in mind, I oh, see there's some there and then stitched over it. Oh, this is going to be fun. What am I going to do next? I think I need to plan my feature embroidery. This is the piece that's going to just go crazy somewhere and weave around. So let's have a look through the little book here. Maybe I'll just do like a branch first, like um, um. <laughs> oh, the decisions, the decisions. I'm thinking we do we we do what? We come around and just free form a bit of a vine through the whole zone and we might come up through it all I don't know where are we going with this girl we just follow a bit of an organic And that'll be our our feature, I think. Then what I might do with this actual seam, because see how it's puffy? This is really thick fabric. Then maybe I can actually do a little, little running stitch through here because the vine is going to be the hero. So we can do a tacking stitch through there. That'll pin that down so that it won't be, you know, puffing up. And we could probably do the same here. Just keep it simple. Just a little running stitch through there. And then embroider away. And then maybe this side, we do the whole trim thing. Sorry, I've stopped speaking because I'm thinking, does that green work? It does. I like, I like this big pink trim. So I thought maybe that would look better on that blue. She's an old girl. She's got a few stains on her. So we put that guy there. Then we can explore some stitches through the blue and we've got a nice background for it to work on. This daintiness comes through here and then I'm thinking the green up here. Because the cream to me it disappears. The cream is safe. But I guess it depends what this looks like. But I do like that pink. And I think the pink is a safe bet because I'm pretty sure I've got some pink ribbons. So maybe we do some pink roses on this vine. Some I learned a tricky little rose when I was with Jennifer. And I think I'd like to play with it. I still think this edge, we will make that decision at a later date. But this is a definite. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So let's pin this trim in. So I can then stitch all of that down. This is my homework. 
that's going to look super, super cool. And it's going to set the colour palette, I think. It'd be great if I could find a ribbon that matched this purpley tone. And they were the flowers. I'll have to have a little look. And I'll cut that here. So that's a definite. This is a definite. Let's have a look at my cottons. I need a nice green. Where's my favourite green? I do like that because it stands out. But this is the second one. Do we need to be softer? I think we need to be bold. I suppose we could do a combination of the two. I think we need to be bold. Is there a better green that I need to consider? So. Just laying that down. Green. Um, where's my cottons? Is there a darker green? That's the same one. There's a darker one. Oh, I don't mind that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I do a combination of the two. Hmm. Um, I'm going to grab my ribbons. Hold that thought. to see what green ribbon I have because that will probably dictate what colour. Oh, I don't have much green ribbon. Barely any. These are this ribbons I've... Oh, hello. These are ribbons I've picked up from um, various places. Look at that. Hmm. Various places. So I sort of got to go with what I got. Oh, what is that? Is that ribbon? Looks like cordage. Japanese. It was like in a big bag. That's pretty. A big bag of bits and bobs that I got from um, finish the sentence. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Um, I got this from Purveyor of Textiles, Melanie. Just random bags of ribbons that she had. Oh, look at that. There's a purple. And a pink. Maybe I'll just pop a few colours with it. Be good to use up some of these random bits. That's too too pink. I think I'm pretty safe, you know, with any of these greens because I'll use that for the leaves and it sort of works with either one. Probably works more with that. I'm going to go dark. I hope that's not a bad decision. So I've even got a bit of a blue because there's a little bit of blue in that but it might be too baby blue who knows that's too dark but it might lift it stop looking and there's a bit more green I might be able to use that up too there's a dark green that'd look really no it doesn't okay there's another green I'll just pull them out and, and use these bits up Add that because you never know. All right, stop looking and make a decision. Okay. 
plenty of ribbons to embellish. So we're we're on to something. It's just this this dark green versus the light green. I think I'm going to go dark. That's too light. So let's just put him away. Put him away. So that's you know very fresh. But that's very moody. I don't know. I'm going to have to sleep on it, guys. What I might have to do is just stitch a little bit and see how it sits on that background. Is the background absorbing it too much? Who knows? Okay. I think we've got a plan. I will, um, I will leave it at that. And I'm going to just look at the piece for a little bit. I've got a plan here, like we'll do something featuring here. We'll put some braids here. We'll then have a play with some random stitches that come off of a braid, like all of these types of pretty things, but we'll get to that. I think if I can get my stem stitched in, so when I come back, you'll see that. You'll see this down, and then we'll pick up from there and see what else happens oh that running stitch there I suspect I will just use cream I just don't want it seen so I think the cream will be what we do there but anyway that's a good start we've got our base we've got our feature bit of a plan bit of a color palette yeah love it all right guys look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video Whatever that may be. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Bye.